But first, we have some breaking news to report. The Senate Intelligence Committee has concluded President Trump's claim that he was wiretapped by President Obama before the election has no basis in fact. In a joint statement, Republican Senator Richard Burr and Democratic Senator Mark Warner write, based on the information available to us, we see no indications that Trump Tower was the subject of any surveillance by any element of the United States government, either before or after Election Day in 2016. And with us on the phone is CBS News congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes. Nancy, good to talk to you. Nancy? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. So what do you make of this uh, statement just released that the Senate Intel uh, Committee has basically said they found nothing, no evidence that this was the truth? Right. Well, now you've got kind of a united front coming from both the House Intelligence and Senate Intelligence committees, as well as the Speaker of the House, who are now all saying uh, that they think that President Trump's accusation that he was spied on by President Obama before Election Day uh, simply has no merit, uh, has no basis. They have spoken to uh, national security officials, and they just don't see it. And that's important because the White House, after uh, President Trump surprised everyone, his own staff included, by tweeting almost two weeks ago uh, that he had just learned that he had been wiretapped by his predecessor, uh, the White House had to back him up. And one of the things that they did was call on Congress to investigate and to get to the bottom of this supposed wiretapping. And you saw the intelligence committees uh, in both the House and the Senate make some preliminary moves to do so. Uh, you know, when the White House requests something, you want to uh, at least make, uh, make, make some effort to, uh, to take it seriously. But Pretty quickly, within a week and a half, we now have Republican leaders of both of these committees saying, you know what, it didn't happen. So he's made several accusations in the past. We know on many different topics. Does this latest sort of revelation, uh, a revelation, I should say, sort of put a, a, a dent into his credibility moving forward? Sure, because he is still claiming, uh, as recently as last night, that actually uh, either wiretapping or something like it did happen. Uh, the White House story changed a couple of days ago. Uh, the White House press secretary has been asked about this repeatedly, uh, and he said, well, you know, wiretapping can actually mean a lot of different things. Um, there, there could have been some kind of surveillance, and then President Trump was interviewed last night, and he said um, the same thing, and he said, I think you'll hear more within the next couple of weeks. Uh, but clearly, what the leaders of these intelligence committees are saying uniformly now, and the Republican Speaker of the House, uh, they are all saying, actually, we don't think we're going to learn more in two weeks. We don't think that it is accurate that you were spied on by President Obama. Nancy, this was a bipartisan statement, and I'm, it's one sentence, pretty short, but I'm struck by this part of it, by any, that it was a subject of surveillance by any element of the United States government. Why did they use those words, by any element of the United States government? Well, that's very interesting, because as you know, the intelligence committees, one of the things they're also looking into is the possibility that there was uh, any kind of communication or coordination between the Trump campaign or Trump associates and the Russian government before the election. So uh, by making that point, not just that they didn't think that, um, that President Obama himself had somehow initiated some kind of surveillance of President Trump, but uh, that nobody in the government uh, was looking for um, uh, information uh, that they could acquire via wiretapping or any kind of surveillance, they're saying that they don't have any indication that that happened. And there, that's interesting because there had been some indication that a FISA warrant had been sought to, um, to basically get legal authority to do surveillance on, if not President Trump himself, then perhaps on some of his associates. And, and what this indicates is that um, at, 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 at the very least there was no FISA warrant sought to conduct surveillance on communication at Trump Tower itself. That's Nancy, what I read into it. Okay, Nancy, the uh, president is in the middle of a battle with his health care plan, trying to get it through uh, within his own party and, of course, uh, with the Democrats. And he's also uh, needing a lot of support for a number of initiatives moving forward. Uh, how will this latest move, this latest statement here uh, by the Intel Committee, affect his relationship with Congress? Well, I think it kind of depends on where uh, he decides to go with this. You know, if he continues to insist that um, that he was 
uh, spied on by the former president, which is a pretty serious charge. Uh, you know, this is not a sort of casual comment. This is, uh, some members believe, very integral to um, the peaceful transition of power, to uh, respect between the parties, to the workings of the government. When you have one president uh, claiming that uh, another president spied on him, you know, that that's serious to a lot of lawmakers from the right and the left here on Capitol Hill. And so uh, certainly if he continues to make this claim as more and more members of his own party speak out and say, no, that's not true, you know, that, that is going to be a bit problematic. On the other hand, you've got a lot of Republican lawmakers up here who say, you know what, we're kind of used to this. This goes with the territory. I mean, Speaker Ryan himself tries to avoid commenting on President Trump's tweets as much as possible for this very reason, that he doesn't kind of want to get dragged into a back and forth about whether they were true or whether they were appropriate, uh, because he doesn't view that as uh, you know, as worthwhile and as a, a good use of his time. Uh, he's said point blank that he doesn't agree with a lot of the things that the president tweets about, and uh, he doesn't see it as his job to answer for for some of these comments that the president makes on Twitter. So I guess a final question for you. At what point does accountability set in place? When can and if the president be held accountable for just saying what he wants to say, just making these charges? Well, you know, it's a, it's a free country, and <laughs> people have a First Amendment right to say what they want to say. Certainly it hurts his credibility with, uh, with, with lawmakers, but the reality is that uh, Republican lawmakers at least still need him. Uh, they need his cooperation. They need him to use his bully pulpit to, uh, for example, go out on the road like he's doing right now and sell the health care bill. So they're going to hold their fire in many cases. Uh, privately, they may think that it's very bizarre to make a claim like this without any proof. Uh, they may think it's ill-advised. They may think it looks bad to our allies and to others abroad. But Many of them believe that it would be counterproductive for them to go out there and, cri and criticize the president aggressively or openly because, um, you know, he has given them this unprecedented opportunity to at least try to pass uh, health care reform that they favor, to try to pass um, uh, reforms to the tax system uh, to try to shape the budget uh, to more uh, to to reflect Republican priorities, and so uh, they need this president uh, despite some of his flaws. All right, Nancy Cortez, thank you for joining us so much, Nancy.